Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number seven from the January 2024 International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P3 paper. And here we have a question about the curve C, which has equation y equals 16 over 9 times 3x minus k, where x cannot be k over 3, and k is a positive constant that is not equal to 3. Okay, so they've given us some information here it says find dy dx giving your answer in its simplest form in terms of k so we have to differentiate this expression and give the answer in terms of k all right so now what i will do first is i'll write y as in a form which is easy to differentiate so i'll put y equals 16 over 9 times 3x minus k to the power of negative one so you know the x terms written on the numerator okay um you know using the laws of indices we know that for example one over a to the power of n gives you a to the power of negative n if you uh, want to write this in the numerator so this term this bracket right in the numerator you have to put to the power of minus one because right there's the power of one which isn't written okay now it's ready to be differentiated now we can differentiate this so we can find what dy dx is so dy dx is going to be when you multiply by the powers you have negative 16 over 9 and then you take 1 from the powers that becomes negative 2 there um, so we can leave it like this that's oh, sorry and then you have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function if you differentiate 3x minus k where k is a constant you end up with 3 don't forget to you know i almost did it there but don't forget you have to use a chain rule so you have to multiply by the power take one from the power and then multiply by the differential what's inside the function don't forget that so this three and this nine will cancel out so you're left with dy dx is equal to minus 16 over three times three x minus k to the power of negative two you can leave your answer like that or you can write it with this underneath so you can put minus 16 over three times three x minus k squared okay so you could write it like that if you want that both 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 of those are perfectly fine all right now this is a bit nicer for substituting values in if you need to then it says the point p with x coordinate one lies on the curve c given that the gradient of the curve at p is minus 12 find the two possible values of k so basically the point p is where x equals one so we know that at p at p x equals one let me just all right at p we know x equals one and we also know that the gradient dy dx remember that when you find dy dx you're finding the gradient function so this tells you the gradient of the curve at any point we want all right so the gradient function is going to be negative 12 when x equals one so basically we can just replace the x with one and dy dx with negative 12 in this and we should find the value of or the values of k the possible values of k so minus 16 over 3 times 3 times 1 minus k squared is going to give us negative 12 all right so what we can do here is we can um uh, what we can do is we can multiply both sides by this all right so you have negative 16 equals that's going to be negative 36 negative 36 times that's 3 minus k squared so if we um divide both sides by negative 36 we're going to have positive 16 over 36 equals 3 minus k squared now if you find the square root of 16 over 36 it's going to give you um plus or minus so 3 minus k squared is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4 the square root of 36 is going to be 6 we could have also simplified this a little bit first okay in fact i'll do that that's probably going to be easier if i simplify 16 over 36 what goes into 16 and 36 both of them well 4 does so 16 over 36 is 4 over 9 
we could do that. That makes life a bit easier. We'll get the same answer in the end. It just makes life easier for you first. So now we can say 3 minus k is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 over 9, which is 2 thirds. So now we can find the two possible values of k. We can say either 3 minus k is 2 thirds, or we can say 3 minus k is equal to negative 2 thirds. If this is the case, we have 3 minus 2 thirds equals k. So k will be equal to 3 minus, that's 9 over 3 minus 2 over 3, which is 7 over 3. Or we can say um, 3 plus 2 thirds equals k, in which case k is going to be 9 over 3 plus 2 over 3, which is 11 over 3. So those are the two possible values of k, 11 over 3 and 7 over 3. And that concludes part B of this question. Now we're going to move on to part C. Okay, so now for part C. Um, in part C here, we are told that given also that k is less than 3. So remember the two values of k we found were 7 over 3 and also 11 over 3. So it says given also that k is less than 3, so that means they want us to use this value. Okay, that's less than 3 because 3 is 9 over 3. Over that, that's more than 3. Find the equation of the normal to C at P. Write your answer in the form AX plus BY plus C equals 0. Now remember, P is a point where X equals 1 and the gradient, okay, of the curve at P is equal to negative 12. We were told that in the question. The gradient at P is negative 12. So if we want to find the equation of the normal to the curve C at P, we need to find one, the Y coordinate of, we need to find the Y coordinate of P. That's one thing. And then we can work out the equation of the normal because this is the equation of the tangent to the curve at P. Remember, the equation of the curve is the same as the equation of its tangent. Now remember, if for example, you have a curve here, you have a line which is um, called the tangent to the curve, which shares the same gradient of the curve at that point. Okay. Now, in this case, the gradient is going to be a negative gradient, so we can kind of change that around. So the tangent would be something which would have, would look something like this. Say this is the tangent to the curve at the point P. Okay. Now, at the point P, say this is the point P. Okay. I, I'm not drawing an accurate sketch or anything. Say this is the point P. You know that's when x equals 1 and y equals what we're going to find. Now, the, the, the normal to the curve is a line which is perpendicular to the tangent. It cuts the tangent at right angles, and it passes through that point. So the gradient of the normal is going to be the negative reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent. So the gradient of the normal is going to be 1 over 12. Right, you change the sign and flip it upside down. So what's missing now for us to find the equation of the normal is the y coordinate at the point P. So we can use this equation here. We say y coordinate of p is equal to 16 over 9 times 3 times 1 minus and we're going to use 7 over 3 we use a k value which is less than 3 okay so this is going to be 16 over 9 times now this is going to be 9 over 3 minus 7 over 3 this is 2 over 3 the 3 cancels with this 9 giving you 3 so you're left with 16 over 6, which is 8 over, divided by 2, 8 over 3. Okay, so that's the coordinate of P, 8 over 3, the Y coordinate of the point P. So now we can use the equation of the straight line formula. We can say Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. So you have Y minus 8 over 3 equals M, which is 1 over 12 times x minus x1, which is 1. Now what we can do is multiply both sides by 12 to get rid of the fractions. That will also get rid of this fraction. So you have 12 times y, which is 12y. Don't forget the 12 is also multiplying this term. So if you have 12 times 8 over 3, 3 in the, the 12 cancel, you give you 4, 4, 8 to 32, so that's minus 32 equals, and you're left here with x minus 1 because the 12 cancel. So now in the form a, ax plus by equals c. So what, let's... Bring this everything on the side where x is positive, that's normally better. You have x minus 12y and plus 31 equals 0. So we end up with x 
minus 12y plus 31 equals 0. And there we have the equation of the straight line which passes through P, okay, and it's the normal to the curve at P, basically. Right, so there's the answer to question 7, part C. And now I think we're going on to part D. All right, given also that k is less than 3, so still using the value of k equals uh, 7 over 3. This is part of the same question. It says, show using algebraic integration that the integral between 1 and 3 of 16 over 9 times 3x minus, I'm going to use k as 7 over 3, with respect to x is equal to lambda times lin 10. We got to find the value of lambda. Okay, so let's sort this out. Let's find out what this gives us. It will give well, the answer should be something times lin 10, and we have to write down the value of that thing, that value of that constant. Okay, don't be scared by this lambda. It's just saying it's a letter. You could say a or b or c lin 10. It's just giving you one that looks a bit more scary. All right, so we have to basically integrate this. Now, when you integrate something like this, you've got to see. So first of all, what I would do is here. This is how I would tackle this. You have 3 and 1. You have 16 over 9 times 3x minus 7 over 3 with respect to x. Okay. Now, what you can do is you can take out the 16 over 9 as a, like, a constant. So you have 1 over and you have... 3x minus 7 over 3 dx. You could, if you want to, also um, like multiply both top and bottom of this fraction by 3 to get rid of the fractions just to make life easier. You could do that. I could multiply the top of this fraction by 3. So I have 16 over 9, and this will be 3 over. And if I multiply both of these terms by 3, I've got 9x minus 7. Okay, because 3 times 3x is 9x, 3 times minus 7 over 3 is 7. And that just makes life slightly easier for us. Okay, and then we can even cancel this 3 with this 9. So we have limits of 3 and 1. Don't forget the limits of 3 and 1. And don't, don't forget the dx. So now it just looks that little bit less intimidating. You have 1 over 9x minus 7. You want to integrate that with respect to x. Now, in this case, you have the numerator of the form of the differential of the denominator. The numerator is of the form of the differential of the denominator. It's something like f dash of x over f of x. And this is, from reversing the chain rule, the result of differentiating lin of something. When you have lin of some function of x, you end up differentiating this with respect to x. This is what happens. So we're going to do the reverse. So what we're going to do is we're going to say you've got your 16 over 3 on the outside. You're going to put your square bracket now that we started to um, differentiate, uh, sorry, integrate. So then we have lin of the modulus of 9x minus 7. Don't forget the modulus. It's always the modulus. And then you divide by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 9. Differentiate 9x minus 7, you get 9. And you have the limits 3 and 1. And we can, if you want, take that 9 outside. So you have 16 over 27. And you have the lin of the modulus of 9x minus 7 to, to the limits of 3 and 1. And now we're ready to put those limits in. Okay, so we have 16 over 27 times the lin of the modulus of 9 times 3 minus 7. Close the modulus sign. Minus the lin of the modulus of 9 times 1 minus 7. Okay, now we've got the limits in there. So we have 16 over 27 times the lin of, that's 3 nines, are 27 minus 7, that's 20. So the lin of the modulus of 20, which is going to be just 20, you don't have to bother about the, the modulus sign because it's positive, minus the lin of 9 minus 7, which is 2. Okay. So we have lin of 20 and lin of 2. So we don't have to have the modulus sign here at all. Okay, because it's a positive number now. Right? Now we can combine these together. Now how do they want to express it as lin 10? And that looks like it's going to work out. Because you have 16 over 27 times the lin of... And you have, to, you have to basically divide these two using the laws of logarithms. That's 20 over 2. 
So you end up with 16 over 27 times lin 10. So we can say lambda is equal to 16 over 27. That's the value of lambda. Okay. So even writing, writing like this is perfectly good as your answer. You don't actually have to say lambda equals. If you do, that's, you know, it's fine. But it says write it in this form. Okay. Okay. Show that it's equal to this where lambda is a constant to be found. So, you know, we've written it as this and that lambda we found the value of the lambda and we've got the answer to this question okay now some people would do this in a completely different way than me i just like to make everything easy in terms of i know that later on we're going to have to substitute values and it's going to be if you have a fraction here it makes life a bit more complicated so we can i, I like to take all the constants out first so 16 over 9 take that out that's fine you can do that that's perfectly good and then I can readjust this fraction to make it look like simplified. This is not a simplified fraction. Why? Because you've got a fraction inside a fraction. So what I did was I multiplied both the top and bottom by 3. That got rid of this fraction from here. So you have 3 over 9x minus 7. And then I took that 3 and cancelled with that 9 outside. And then it just made everything a lot easier. And so that's the end of question number 7 from this January 2024 Pure Mathematics P3 paper. I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. And um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region of the screen. From this paper, you'll have questions dealing with... Now, I've got a few different topics here, haven't I? I should have maybe done them separately. But you've got differentiation and integration together. So I'll put the playlist in this area here for integration and one for differentiation over there or vice versa. And you will be able to... Um, subscribe to the channel by clicking on the link on the top if you haven't already done so. Thank you for watching and see you soon.